Okay, so hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Now in this video I'm going to be talking about the pros and cons of owning and driving uh, and dailying and living in a classic van. Um, like, you know, this is now, this is a 1995 Mercedes T1 um, 310D and uh, it's, even though it's 1995, it's one of the last generation, most of this stuff in this van was designed in the 80s or 70s even. I'm going to talk about what I think the costs are like in comparison to modern vehicles but I might be wrong but anyway we'll get into all that in a bit but for now I'm here upgrading the cab. So my little plant pot that's down here I'll put a shot in of it now lives in here and it fits perfectly in the glove box which used to have a lid but I took it off. Now there's no cup holders in here and there's no like kind of stuff to put anywhere. There's on top of the engine you've got a little thing and obviously this would be a thing but other than that oh and behind the steering wheel is quite a good shelf but absolutely no cup holders whatsoever. So what I've just made which I got carried away doing is this nice little tray which I'm going to paint black with black wood paint uh, to smarten it up because it's just scrap wood and that's going to live there. Um, I used to have my phone holders there but I'm moving my phone to lower down uh, out the way and I'm just going to have this tray here where I can put like phones and just stuff you got in your pockets and stuff and whatever just on the tray in there so I think that's going to be a really nice idea um, and then I'm going to be building a drinks holder here I've seen it on Facebook and um, on uh, one of the groups someone put a picture of it and uh, they built like a little two layer thing with plywood for drinks to sit in so I'm basically going to copy that I've got this bit of batten that's going to sit nicely in the engine compartment and stop it sliding off and then I just need to cut the rest to shape before I paint this black I'm going to get the other bit ready so that they can both be painted black um, so I'm going to get the plywood out and start cutting this and making this a nice shape that we can um, work some out I'm at work at the moment but um, we're waiting for some bits so uh, we're waiting a couple of days so rather than go anywhere I was just like, I'm just going to do some bits in my van. I'm also in the process of basically just finishing the cab. I've got a bit of material to go on the back, but I need some spray adhesive, so I'm going to go into town in a minute. Um, and I've got I've got some USBs here in the USB-C socket, but I haven't got any 12 volt socket, which I do miss. So I'm going to put a 12 volt socket in here. I'm also going to be removing the blower motor switch because the blower motor is broken because they always are. I will replace it at some point but I'm just going to put it on one of these normal on off switches. I'm not going to have a two level one. Um, or maybe I can have low setting and, and high setting on two different switches but I'm not too fussed about how it works. It's like if it's all in one panel I think it's going to look smart and I've just bought one of these generic little uh, toggle switches. And to cover all the holes in the dash I'm going to be getting some nice bits of plywood and gluing them on because I've seen that done in a few general classic vehicles even like classic cars sometimes have like nice plywood dashes uh, not plywood necessarily hardwood as well I've also got some LED light bars that have turned up at Chelsea's campsite so I'm excited to get back there and um, see them and because they're gonna be going on the bottom of the box for like uh, just really bright lights when you're driving um, and they're gonna be on another separate switch I do also need to run a headlight trigger up there because um, I do want them on main beam um, sometimes only on off-road purposes of course I've also bought some more of this blue dashboard paint if you haven't seen that video I'll stick the link in the card up here but I painted my dashboard in uh, leather paint um, so it remains flexible now where it's been scuffed by the dog and taking this engine cover off it has got a bit tatty but to be fair for dashboard paint it's not too bad um, so I'm going to do a couple more coats and I didn't do the other door card so I'm going to do the other door card and this handle because it looks weird being grey so yeah bought some uh, oh no I haven't bought that yet because it won't deliver to the Scottish Highlands so when I get an address lower down I'll have to order that <laughs> but anyway I'll stop rambling now um, I'm going to crack on um, taking this switch out while I'm at the taking out stages and then I won't film that but then yeah we'll get the bits of plywood out so next is going to be as I said to cut the bits of plywood to make this drinks holder because yeah having no drinks holder is a pain in the ass so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little shelf that sticks out from here so we'll say 20 centimeters and then it's going to have a bit of batten in between which will raise the two layers apart I'm making it a cup holder. I shall show you. Right, 
So now for the main piece, which is this piece of batten, because that goes in there like that. Uh, I could have tapered that a bit more so it was more level to, oh well, I'm not that technical. <laughs> so here, yeah, I've done it. And then, that simply wedges in there. A little bit wobbly. Can add some like maybe um, self-adhesive foam to the bottom. There's a little padding strip. But I drill some holes in there. Cup holder. It is kind of in the way of the stereo, but I didn't want to make it stick out too much. If you're doing this for yourself, you could make it stick out more. Lots of people do. But Yoshi sits here and I didn't want it to take up too much of his room, so I've made it as small as I can. Until the rest of the bits get here, when I can finish it off, um, it's better than it was, basically. So, yeah. So, next day, and typical Scotland, it's now rainy. We are now going to put these in place. So we have this one that needs screwing in. That guy's going to go just about there. And it fits perfectly under that plant pot, which that plant pot fits perfectly in the glove box. So it's just all perfect. Camera watch is going to die, and then this goes in here. And if you push it in, it kind of locks in there like that. As I said, it could do with a bit of foam underneath just to support it a bit more. And then you can stick your drinks in there. And yeah, it's a bit in the way of the radio, but as I said, Yoshi kind of sticks his head down here and lives down here, so <laughs> didn't want to take up too much room. But that just kind of. I need to paint obviously the holes that I just drilled. But anyway, I'm just going to screw this down with some screws I got there straight through there's loads of holes in it anyway from the previous owner um, with stuff that was here there was a plywood box with a load of cables in it so I don't know what that did but anyway screw that down and uh, yeah and then my phone holder is going to go here hopefully it'll fit behind my water bowl but this is I think the size of a standard coffee cup so um, if you got a coffee cup it would be a bit lower and therefore wouldn't be so in the way but yeah it's not going anywhere it's solid it does rock a little bit but as I say Maybe some tweaks can be made, but it's a very simple design that kind of holds itself in and it doesn't ruin the dashboard in any way, unlike this one. So there we are, and accidentally that is the exact height of my phone. It will fit vertically in there absolutely perfectly. But it means now when, when Chelsea and that lot are in there, she used to put a phone in the plant pot, but now there's a nice tray to put all of that. And Yoshi likes to stick his head over this, so that's why it's not very tall. So hopefully you can see over that. And uh, yeah, it's a... Uh, Coming along nicely, as I say, this is the little switch panel I bought, um, which the B2B switch is now wired into this one just temporarily. As I say, to cover the hole, I'm going to put bits of plywood on and stuff to make it all tidy. And uh, this is my little socket. As you can see, my little spider plant as well is doing beautifully, growing some little babies, as you can see, all the way down. It's pretty cool. It's doing well living in the cab, so yeah could do with planting it up into some little ones putting them in the back but anyway don't have loads of pots and place to put it but maybe I will one day right anyway my camera's dying so I'm gonna see you guys when I head off into town and we talk about what it's like driving a classic van so hello everyone I am back uh, it's the next day yesterday I was gonna take you on a drive when I went into town uh, to demonstrate these things but I was going in towards rush hour and I just wanted to go in and out and I forgot about filming. <coughs> so, I'm here now the next day uh, after I've done a couple more jobs and now it's kind of spitting and drizzling and being Scottish outside. So yeah, and you might notice behind me that I have covered the backing material. Now you might remember me saying that I was going to make the cut through into the cab. Now I'm not going to do that anymore. <laughs> One, I can't really be asked. Two, I see how much my box moves compared to my cab, so it's probably going to be a nightmare. Uh, so I bought some material for it to tidy it up and uh, put it on today. And yeah, it's smartened it up. Oh, I forgot to cut out and put in the diesel heater vent because I have a diesel heater line running to the cab from my diesel heater in the rear, which means that I can warm the cab in the morning when the van's running. Um, and warming up because the blower motor in here doesn't work so yeah but the heat does come in when you're driving because it's the fence in the front anyway 
over all of that, I'm talking about what it's like to daily drive slash live in, um, and still daily drive, uh, a classic van. As I said at the beginning of this video, a lot of its parts are made from the 80s and 70s, so it's quite an old van, um, despite it not actually being terribly old, um, although I would like it to be MOT and tax exempt because, yeah, it's quite expensive. Anyway, one of the first things you might say is, you know, is she loud? And, um, yeah, if you're um, driving and you want to have a conversation with the person next to you, you kind of have to raise your voice. And when I'm filming in here, a lot of the time, uh, it doesn't pick my voice up because I'm not talking loud enough. So, um, yeah. She's loud, and that comes with, um, is she slow as well? Uh, yeah, 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 I have lots of slow stickers on the back, letting people know behind me that I'm not going to be going fast, especially when I'm going uphill. She only goes about 50 to 55 on the flat, and down to 35, 40 quite often, so not the quickest. So yeah, no, she's not great, but, however, she is a five-cylinder, non-turbo diesel Mercedes masterpiece that, like, everyone loves. Um, it's a quality engine that will do a million miles without a second thought. So, yeah. Um, absolutely brilliant engines, uh, and that's why I bought it. Um, and I've also straight-piped it, so she does, in my opinion, although she's loud, sound great, because uh, her name is Rose yeah, if I didn't mention that bit already. And if you're not subscribed, because a lot of people aren't subscribed to these videos when you watch them, so I'd really appreciate a subscribe down below and uh, hit the like button while you're down there. Um, anyway, moving on. Um, everyone, everyone smiles and waves and uh, loves the van as it goes past. Like, old vans, they just have so much character. Like, you just don't get that with the new van. Um, it's just... They just don't have, like, they just don't make them unique anymore. All the brands are becoming one, and it's just, it's just boring. None of them have come up with anything interesting recently. They're just so much more loved, um, and they do, they do last longer, and they are much more simpler. Like, you can fix this if it goes wrong on the side of the road. There's no electronics. You haven't got anything to plug into. If something's broken, it's mechanical. You can fix it with a spare part, which you can get from a store not far away. Because um, you can get parts for these quite easily. Uh, Euro car parts sell quite a lot in an emergency. If not, eBay's quite a good shot. So, in my opinion, these vans are highly reliable. Um, that my van has done 262,000 miles um, and still going strong. I did take the engine out and do the head gasket and stuff, but everything pretty much looked good. There was one minor problem where she was taking a few more turns to start, so maybe there was a leak somewhere, but that's all fixed now, so yeah. Not to say there isn't still tweaking to do, I think there's tweaking to do on injector timing and the actual injectors themselves, so yeah got some work to do still uh, to make her tip top but she's sounding great anyway I've done all the breaks and uh, MOT is in two weeks so exciting stuff um, another disadvantage to the old classic van with no turbo is poor MPG now again as I said mentioned a few things there I'm not on the strong point for my um, condition of my engine I need to tweak it slightly but I get about 23 on the motorway on nice flat roads doing like long distance so it's not too bad however you really notice it when you go into the hills of Scotland and you're going second and third gear a lot round up and down hills and round corners and stuff and slowing down um, goes down to about 15 to 17 so it goes down quite a lot and especially with running the engine in the winter that uses quite a lot of fuel which technically affects my miles per gallon um, because I have no digital way of calculating it I just have to do it manually using it online well there's a moth right <laughs> now cheap to fix um, not a lot of garages will work on these so you do have to be careful when buying one of these or know someone who is willing to fix it for you when bits do go wrong because the things that go wrong on these are just things that wear out like 
worn components, worn suspension, bushes, bushes generally, little parts on the engine, springs and stuff snap over time. I've had various little things. But relatively, me, I do all the work myself. That's what I like. Everything that breaks, I go, well, there's a new thing. Anything that looks worn out, I go, well, I'll change that. It's a new learning experience. I've changed that. I know how that works now. If, if it goes again, I kind of know what's not, what's wrong and I can do that. So a lot of self-learning with this van. Um, I don't know what I'm doing. I just go into it. I've got a whole other channel on doing things on the channel. So if you haven't seen that, I'll stick the link in the card up here. So in my opinion, like... If I was to do the same with a modern vehicle, like you can to an, to an extent fix things yourselves. You can buy a pretty cheap OBD reader, plug it in, and see what it is. Replace the part. I've done it before. Um, it it can be quite good, but if major things go wrong with wiring looms and stuff, and if you look at highly complicated cars in the early 2000s now, if one kind of thing gets chafed in the wiring loom or something the whole car goes haywire so it only takes a matter of one little thing for the whole thing to go shit because it's all done on electrics so that's why i like mechanical simplicity um so my in my opinion cheaper to run um and fix uh, in general apart from the fact that they absolutely scam you out of tax just because it's too old to have a euro status <laughs> anyway <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's my conclusion. So in my opinion, I love it. It's not for everyone, don't get me wrong. But um, in my opinion, couldn't have anything better than an old 90s, 80s or even 70s diesel van that will just go forever um, as long as you get the right engine. Because not every engine is good from the old ty times, but these old Merc engines were known to just be bulletproof and the million mile engine. So yeah. Okay, so today I'm going to be carrying on with my little cab pieces of wood. I've marked them all up on these bits of wood here, and then I'm just going to cut them with a jigsaw. Give these a bit of a sound and a varnish. This is already sounded and varnished. This is a piece of flooring. Um, and then screw or glue them into the cab. Um, but uh, the cab is made of foam and metal, and some of the switches are in the way of the metal, so I need to cut some of it out and stuff. So, yeah. Um, but for now, let's just cut these bits of wood and see what they look like in the front. Here are the three bits. So let's get these sanded and see what these look like. Hey Yoshi Bum, don't wrap yourself around my tripod. How the fuck did you do that? Yoshi! Wait! Did you walk yeah. under it? He walked through it. Wait Yoshi, stay there. Come here. <laughs> Mad dose! Yoshi, come! Good lads. Good lads. What a good boy. There you go. No, you're not wrapped around the camera. You little hazard. Let's go and see what these look like in the front. Look at the Yoshi bum, hey? Hello Yoshi. <laughs> so, we've got this one for here. That fits beautifully. Although I think I want it that way around. This one is going to go here, but I need to remove this stuff first. Yeah, that's going to look pretty cool. And then this one is shaped to there, which if I take off the B2B switch, which is the only one attached at the moment, then this one will slot nicely into there. And then the switch panel. And then as I said, I need to cut a little bit more of this material out. And then with this, I'm going to have a 12 volt socket and this USB. The 12 volt socket, I believe, is just here. So that's going to go in there as well. I have two of them in the dashboard. So then I can use things like air compressors and stuff on the 12 volt socket. Now what I'm now going to do is disconnect this 12 volt, this USB socket and disconnect this old blower motor socket and then here my phone is going to go on there like that if you can see that i'm not sure if you can see that but yeah 
It's going to go like that. Sticks out a little more than I imagined. I've got this hole here, so I'm going to route out a little channel for the cable to come round and then go into the bottom of this little wireless charger that I've got. And then I've bought a little short cable, so I don't have to have this long one. And uh, if I want music from the stereo, I can just plug that um, into the phone uh, to get the music. But sometimes I just like listening to the sound of the engine, so I don't need the music on. So uh, I can just have the phone charging just on the wireless mount. And it might charge a bit quicker with them both connected, I don't know what will happen. <laughs> but um, yeah, the idea, stick that on there, cut that through there, and then put these two in here. I need to run a new cable for this 12 volt socket there. So yeah, see if we can get this done pretty quickly because I'd like to clean Chelsea's van after because the weather today is looking okay and then over the weekend, Saturday and Sunday, it's gonna look pretty good. So yeah, and it's high chances. So we've got to take chances to paint the van. So that's what we're gonna be doing hopefully tomorrow. But anyway, at the moment, I am going to, as I said, stick these in there, bosh that in there and uh, stick that on there. So, quick montage. I'm going to show you guys, look at this, it's a T4 crew cab with a mad ass box on the back, look how cool that is, and it, it pops up by the looks of it so it's not too tall, that is really cool, wow, you watching them Yoshi? So we're going to start by swapping this battery over and drilling a hole through the metal. That one doesn't have metal. That one doesn't have metal. That one does have metal. Hello there. Hello darling. Hey darling. Oh it's an actual pickup. Yeah. Oh wow, that looks nice. I like that. Yeah. That looks very pretty. Especially those two top ones. These ones? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Much smarter now. Have a nice walk. <laughs> Whoa! Make sure you listen. This way! Hiya. Yeah. Sorry um, I know about the parking? Right, they were the nice couple with the uh, the other camper. Oi, let's uh, not overexpose me. Come to me, I can show you what I've done. Here we are. Now, 
I think this does stick out a bit too much because if you put a full beam on and uh, push it back it's kind of in the way of the phone but <laughs> well, you don't really need to indicate if you're in full beam and it's it's all right like that kind of it's all right normally just when it's in full beam so I might have to take that off um, and put it back but for now everything else is is fine and I'm really happy with all the little wood touches and now it looks pretty uniform and quite nice and I still need to paint the insides of these black but for now that's on there so I did also varnish the back wall today again because it was looking a bit sorry for itself and peeling in a couple of places but um, yeah it's now had a fresh coat uh, ready for um, hopefully over the next week which will probably be the next video is going to be prepping for the MOT um, I've done all the brakes now so hopefully they're all working all right uh, that's only really my worry because it does pull a little bit to the left but hopefully hopefully she'll be good but um yeah anyway i think that's probably going to be it for this week's video as i say catch you in the next one when i'm tarting up roads basically doing the last few bits ready for an mot and uh yeah looking forward to it so um as i said before if you haven't subscribed make sure you do if you haven't hit the like button make sure you do that as well and please do leave a comment down below and let me know your thoughts of the video and uh, i'll see you in the next one